Hey, Rob from Mortar42 here, and today, well, we're going to be looking at the streaming wars. That's right. A war is going on right now, and we're all kind of a part of it. So, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be interesting. Just kind of want to break things down a little bit, have a little talk about it, and, uh, and see what we come up with. And I also want to say, uh, first of all, thank you for watching this. I appreciate that. But, uh, but also, yeah, things are going to be a little spotty over the next uh, few weeks just because of everything going on. I mean, lots of family things, lots of just regular life things, some movie things. So, so yeah, but stay tuned. It's, uh, it's going to be fun. And, you know, if you're not subscribed, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button? I mean, a lot of people that watch my videos aren't even subscribed. So, hey, it's, it's, it's there and it's free. You know, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, you don't have to. Not, I'm not forcing you to, but if you want to, you know, hey, why not? But uh, but yeah, let's get into this. Now, here's what brought all of this about. Uh, it kind of got me thinking a lot about this. I mean, just over the last few weeks, we've had Roku and YouTube, um, and really just Roku versus Google, man, just fighting over the YouTube TV app and, and sort of these sort of unfair practices that, that Google is forcing upon Roku for for search results and for, you know, uh, basically prioritizing YouTube TV over other things. I mean, it just got me thinking about how crazy these wars are getting when it comes to streaming. I mean, there's Netflix, there's Hulu, there's Disney Plus and Amazon Prime and Apple TV Plus and, and Paramount Plus. And, and I mean, there's, there's just so Peacock. There's so many. There's so many right now. So, you know, how do you, uh, how do you choose? Now, this thing about Roku versus YouTube, you know, before we really kind of break down each one, it's, it's really kind of, it's two big companies fighting over, over, you know, pr their prone practices and stuff. You know, Google maybe, maybe trying to force Roku into, into doing things that, that help them. And, you know, Roku is uh, of course blaming Google for, you know, sort of trying to monopolize uh, their system. And when it really comes down to it, this is just my opinion, but when it really comes down to it, what you stream on is less of a, a an issue for a lot of these, these, these streamers, right? Like Netflix doesn't care whether you watch it on your phone or your, your smart TV or an Apple TV or Roku and Amazon Fire Stick. I mean, there's so many, there's so many, there's not a whole lot of money in the platform itself. It's really all about that subscription. That's really what they care about. And let's make no mistake, they don't really care if you, you know, if you don't subscribe to Amazon versus Netflix versus, that. they just want your subscription, right? That's really what it comes down to. They want your subscription no matter what. So let's, uh, let's look into that. Now here's some of the the pricing structures, at least for some of the most popular ones here in the United States. I'm, I, can't cover every every country. I mean, it's just just it's impossible. There's there's so many different tiers and and even different you know structures based on the on the uh, the territory. Like like for example, Disney Plus is completely different in the EU versus in the US. But but we're just going to focus on the US just to to kind of get an idea. So yeah, I mean Netflix has three different uh, three different plans that you can choose from. And really, what it comes down to, if if you're a single person. And you want to watch Netflix? I mean, yeah, go with the eight ninety nine. You know, the only problem is that you don't get HD or even Ultra HD uh, if you sign up for that basic one. And the standard, you know, it's thirteen ninety nine. You can watch it on two screens. You can watch it on two phones or tablets. You can download uh, unlimited movies and TV shows. Blah 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 blah. You do get the HD though, and I think that's where most people sort of land. Uh, I mean, that's, that's where we are, but you know, that's just a thing. And then of course the 1799, you can watch it on more screens. And of course you get ultra HD as well. So yeah, I mean, it's, it, it can be confusing just, just starting out just for Netflix. But I think most of us probably know exactly where we stand with Netflix. HBO max on the other hand, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward, at least right now, right now it's 1499 a month and that's it. But you can see, this is the kind of stuff that they have on HBO Max. Of course, HBO Max is one of my favorites. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can completely understand when people say, eh, $14.99 a month, that's, that's starting to get into uh, real premium territory. But that's also why HBO Max is introducing an ad-supported tier coming in June for $9.99 a month. Now, I think that's that's an interesting question, you know? Like, at what point 
are the the extra ads you know it does it take away the value of 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 the product right because i mean like for me this wouldn't be that big of a deal at least not to me the big deal though is that you're not going to get the same day movies on the 999 subscription so if you're looking you're like hey for 10 bucks i can i can watch uh the you know the the new suicide squad movie coming in august nope not on the 999 ad supported one you can only watch that on the 1499 uh full hbo max subscription so i mean it kind of uh you know adds a little uh wrinkle to to your plans there i think a lot of people have amazon prime i mean look amazon kind of rules all you know they're they're kind of like the uh the one ring in a way but yeah they amazon prime there's a lot of benefits to having that of course the prime shipping i mean that's that's probably why most people get it in the first place but but yeah their streaming has been i mean look, they've had some quality programming on there and some great movies as well so i mean yeah i mean you've got the jack ryan series you know you re we recently watched invincible on amazon prime which was excellent I mean, yeah, Amazon, they're definitely a contender. Now you have to, you have to pay this, you know, per year to get the best deal, right? $119 for the year. And of course you can do just the prime video for $8.99, but why would you do that? I mean, I think at this point, you know, it just makes more sense to do the yearly one. And then you've got Hulu. Hulu has got some uh, amazing content. Um, a lot of content that, well, I'll be honest with you, I don't, have hulu right now because we weren't watching it so we canceled it a while back but there's been some things lately that i really really want to watch and of course this is the same sort of thing you know you've got hulu 5.99 a month for 59.99 a year if you do the whole year and then if you want no ads it's 11.99 a month so so yeah i mean these are all you know they're all around the same price but but yeah it starts to really pile up doesn't it now, Disney Plus, you know, started out at $5.99 a month, I think, or $6.99 a month. Yeah, I'm not sure what they are now. Uh, it's actually $7.99 a month now for Disney Plus, but for $80 a year, you get the, the whole year of Disney Plus. And then, of course, now they have that deal where you can bundle Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus for $14 a month, which really is not a bad deal, especially if you just want the two, you know, two of the three. I mean, like us, we, we have a Disney Plus subscription and an ESPN Plus subscription. So, I mean, it kind of almost makes sense. But, well, we'll get into what we're doing right now a little bit later. But, but yeah, Disney Plus for $7.99 a month, I mean, that's really not that bad for as much content as you do get, especially if you're a fan of Marvel or Star Wars. I mean, to me, it's kind of a no-brainer. And finally, Paramount Plus, uh, probably the, the the newest one on the block, I think. Um, I mean, they kind of were CBS All Access before, but anyway. Yeah, so they have a, a $5.99 monthly or $59.99 annually, and that's for commercials, right? That's that's with commercials. The If you want commercial free, it is $9.99 a month and $99.99 annually. So yeah, I mean, that's another one where you kind of have to decide which one makes the most sense. Um, actually, we, we signed up for Paramount Plus early uh, for the whole year and we got 50% off. So it was only for us. It was $50 for the year for that first year. Uh, that's something that my wife wanted, to be honest with you. I didn't see a whole lot that I wanted to watch right away. So I wasn't too concerned about it. But but yeah, Paramount Plus is, is uh, well, they're about to have some good stuff. And I think that's really what it comes down to for most people. It's it's really breaking down what do you really want to watch and what, what kind of content do you typically watch? I mean, to me, I think Paramount Plus, I it, look, I'm not trying to be ageist. I don't even know what it is, but I think a lot of older people, they find a lot of value in Paramount Plus because they also get the CBS live TV and all that kind of stuff. So if you don't have a cable subscription and you want to watch live TV, you can watch live TV with Paramount Plus, which is kind of a, a bonus. And a lot of their programming, I mean, let's be honest, it, it, it appeals to, a, to an older audience, you know, the NCIS and the, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, it's just not something I, I care about. But hey, you know, if you're, if you're in a fan of Star Trek, I mean, I think a lot of Star Trek fans probably had CBS All Access, now Paramount Plus, because they wanted to watch their new Star Trek stuff. And I get that. I totally get that. And of course, you get the Paramount Library as well um movies like Raiders of the Lost Ark you know and stuff like that I mean I get that but then you've got Disney Plus right I've, I've talked about that 
<laughs> ad nauseum, right? Marvel movies, the Star Wars movies, Pixar movies, the regular Disney films. There's a lot of great content on Disney Plus, and but I have to be honest with you, I really only watch it when there's a new series coming out. I mean, that's just me. And Hulu, like I said, they have they have things like you know The Handmaid's Tale. You know, they're, they're exclusive programming, right? And they have a lot of a lot of TV shows and series that come out early before Netflix. I mean, that's really I think the the main the main thing about Hulu. And of course, since it's owned by Disney, you get a lot of the let's say the adult programming for for a lot of those Fox properties. So things like Deadpool, things like Logan, those are the things that would that would show up over on Hulu. You just can't get those on Disney Plus because they're more kid friendly. To me, you've got I would say a lot of programming on Amazon. I mean, it's just the breadth of programming and and stuff that they have on Amazon is it's just crazy. They add hundreds of titles every week and some of them are, you know, a lot of uh a lot of foreign films and things like that, but but they just have a lot of stuff. In fact, I would say Amazon and Netflix are almost tied as far as the quantity, you know, kind of kind of uh, streaming service. They just have so much stuff. And Netflix has been adding new movies, w at least one every week. Um, and this is original movies now. So they've spent a ton of money on their original programming. Um, of course, Stranger Things is probably one of the biggest things there. I mean, recently we had, uh, I mean, gosh, the the Old Guard, which was a movie with, with Charlize Theron. We had the uh, was it Spencer Confidential with Mark Wahlberg? I mean, the, the, they're coming out with new stuff all Extraction. Chris uh, Chris Hemsworth. That was uh, actually a pretty fun movie. So so yeah, I mean, it's it's really really tough because of all the exclusive stuff. And then you look at HBO Max. HBO Max is probably the gold standard to me as far as quality programming. Right? I mean, their their stuff has always just been excellent. I mean, all the way back from The Sopranos. And, and, you know, The Wire and, and shows like that. All the way now to, you know, Game of Thrones. You had uh, Boardwalk Empire was a great one. Um, the Sopranos, right? I mean, just great, great stuff. Did I say Sopranos twice? I might have. It's okay. See, the all my, my whole point is that HBO just has a bunch of great stuff. And, of course, now that they're, they're teamed up with Warner, it's it's one of those things where, you know, you get all of these new movies, brand new movies, day and date with when they release in theaters for the whole year of 2021. That's kind of a big thing. I mean, th there's, there's really no other company that's doing that. Disney is doing it, but you have to pay the premium if they do it, right? So, like, like Raya and the Last Dragon was one of those where you had to pay the premium. Black Widow is coming out that way. At least that's the plan right now. You will have to pay the $29.99 if you want to watch Black Widow on Disney Plus the day it comes out. But then you you basically have unlocked it on your Disney Plus account. So it's kind of a weird thing. And it's like, I kind of feel like what they're wanting you to do is go to the theater, watch the movie, then come home, buy it, and then you just have it on your Disney Plus account. I don't know if everybody's going to do that. So let's take a look at what I subscribe to, okay? So, I mean, this just kind of gives you an idea of what we look at. And really, this whole this whole conversation started just because of all the, these fights between Roku and YouTube. I mean, who would have guessed? But, but I mean, like right now, we subscribe to Netflix. Yeah, $13.99 a month. I mean, it's a... It's kind of a, a standard in our house, and it's been a standard for a very, very long time. We were a subscriber of Netflix back in the disc days, right? So we had the, what, three movies a month or something, or three movies at a time, I guess you could say. Uh, and yeah, you know, you set up your queue, you watch it, and once you watch it, you throw it in the mail and send it back. It was awesome, you know? And of course, not exactly the the in, the the whole reason that Blockbuster died off, but definitely helped. You know what I mean? And next, I would probably put on there Amazon Prime. Yeah, we pay the one nineteen ninety nine a year, which comes out to nine ninety nine a month. So yeah, I mean, it, it, it's look. Every, I think everybody. I mean, just Amazon is you just can't get away from it, right? But uh, but like I said, they've had some really really good stuff, and I I really enjoyed watching Borat when it came out. So, I mean, you know, Amazon's, uh, Amazon's a thing. Now, another one we have in, and something that we were actually not paying for, for a while, because we have the, the whole, uh, what do you call it? The, the family plan kind of thing, right? Where anybody in your, in your family 
if they subscribe to a, a, a product, you actually get access to it as well. So we weren't actually paying for this for, for quite a while, but we are now. Uh, it is the Apple TV Plus $4.99. And fun fact, neither my wife or I have yet to watch a single program on Apple TV Plus. But it is a thing. And you know what? It's it's actually a pretty good deal. And I know that a lot of people have been talking about how great some of their some of their stuff is. So so yeah, it's definitely something I'm gonna check out soon. Now this next one I gotta tell you I, I don't watch, but this is something that my wife subscribes to because she likes British TV, and that is Acorn. Acorn TV has some great content for her. She just she watches the crap out of it. She just loves it. So yay. Now this next one, of course, look, Disney Plus, yeah, we have it. And and we actually did the whole early bird, early subscriber thing, because we knew we were gonna get it. I mean, we knew that we wanted the Star Wars stuff, we knew we wanted the Marvel stuff, we we heard about all the series, we we're like, we're just gonna have it. And plus, you know, we have uh, our nieces and nephews, you know, come over every now and then, and you know what, it's, it's nice to be able to plop them in front of something that we know that is gonna be fine. So yeah, we did the $180, for the three years of Disney Plus, which comes down to $5 a month. And yeah, we're, so we have it for what, the next two years, I guess? And then, like I said earlier, yeah, we uh, we got Paramount Plus and that comes down to $4.17 a month because of it was really only the $50 for the year. So, so that was actually a pretty good deal there. And then, I mean, look, we're already spending some money here, right? But yeah, we have ESPN Plus. Fifty nine ninety nine a year, and of course, I we have to we have to we have to do ESPN Plus because we watch the the UFC. It's really the only reason we have it. But yeah, I mean, it's fifty nine ninety nine for the year, which comes down to five dollars a month. And this one we're really lucky with. I mean, it's just it's it's lucky. We have HBO Max, and we get it for free because of the the uh, AT and T our AT and T deal. Our AT and T bill covers it. So. So yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's a thing. Now this next one I wasn't gonna add, but I kind of have to, right? It is a monthly fee and it is something that, well, it's content, right? And uh, that's YouTube Premium. It's $22.99 a month and that is a family plan. Um, it is cheaper if you buy just like a single license, but look, I gotta be honest with you. If you go YouTube Premium, it's hard to go back because you, you don't have to watch ads. And that is such a big thing, you know? So, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, look, it's a, it, it racks up fast. So yeah, our total per month, right? If you really break it down, our total per month is $73 and 11 cents. I mean, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money to spend every month just to watch stuff. Now, like I said, I personally could probably do without, well, Paramount Plus, nah. ESPN Plus, yeah, for sure, keep it. YouTube Premium, yeah, keep it. Disney Plus, yeah, keep it. But like Netflix and Amazon Prime, I go through spurts, right? Where I just don't, some that some months I watch a ton of Netflix, some months I watch a, a ton of Amazon. But really, it's a lot of HBO Max, a lot of YouTube Premium. I mean, let's, let's be honest, that's probably the most I watch. And then ESPN Plus, yeah. All I'm trying to do is point out that yeah, this stuff racks up quick. And yeah, we don't, we don't pay for, uh, we don't, in fact, I think my wife has Peacock. I think she signed up for Peacock, like the ad supported version. And that's, that's one I didn't even go into, but yeah, I mean, it's just, there's so much content and there's so much out there. And how do you know from month to month what to get? But as you can see, it can rack up fast. And especially if you do the whole thing where it's a year, it's, it's a, it's quite a commitment, you know, to, to throw down, to, to get this content. So yeah, it's such a, such a weird time. And again, I want to point out that as far as I'm concerned, I don't think it matters what you watch it on. Right. And so like there's people that, you know, they swear by their Roku or so they swear by their Chromecast or they swear by what, whatever Apple TV. It honestly, it's all the same. Right. And it's really just dependent upon, well, how good is the UI? How good is the experience of doing it? I mean, for me, I enjoy my Apple TV because it links up with all of my stuff. Right. If I want to watch a movie from my computer, it's really simple. I just go to my computer and click the button and it's there. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just, it's seamless. 
but then, you know, a lot of people will say, yeah, it's, it's no big deal to, to throw up my content, you know, onto a Chromecast or, or whatever. I mean, I think that is really where a lot of the value kind of comes in, but, but make no mistake. The hardware just doesn't matter. I mean, look at the video game industry, you know, look at what, uh, what Microsoft is doing right now. I mean, it's really the same sort of thing. They, sure, they will sell you a Series X all day long, but what they really want is you to buy that Game Pass, that monthly subscription. That's what they want. That's what they want from you. So I'm kind of curious what everybody subscribes to and, and how much you spend per month. And I mean, I'm, I'm really, really curious, you know, if there's any of those that you go, yeah, I'll never pay that, you know, or maybe, you know what? I pay for the ad version, but I really want to get the no ads version. And does it, does it actually affect you when someone like HBO Max says, you know what, we'll come out with a cheap version, but uh, yeah, you won't be able to see those day and day movies. I'm curious what you think. You know, I'm really curious. Leave those thoughts down below and we'll talk about it. I mean, that's that's the, the beautiful thing about having a show like this is, is that we can discuss things. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.